टॉपिक टू द टॉपिक की इन्फेक्शन ब्रोंकोस्कोपी एंड द स्पीकर इज डॉक्टर प्रिया शर्मा सी द डीएम इन टीबी चेस्ट सी डी डीएम इन पल्मोनरी क्रिटिकल केयर मेडिसिन एंड शी इज परसेंटली वर्किंग एज कंसल्टेंट इन इंद्रप्रस्थ अपोलो हॉस्पिटल दिल्ली we all know that uh, prevention is better than cure for every procedure we should take proper precaution uh, for uh, safety of the patient and uh, safety of the yourself uh, so uh, presently uh, dr priya sharma is going to talk on control during the bronchoscopic procedure so dr priya uh, please start thank you sir so good afternoon everyone today we will be uh, discussing about the infection control during bronchoscopy slides are not moving hmm. so the main objectives of this presentation is what is the scope of the problem why do they occur what do we currently do to prevent these infections and then the summarizing all the points so there is a study which showed that uh, the number of outbreaks in a year through the medical devices that are being used uh, from starting from vaginal pro probes it's around 0 per year then endoscopes again 0 and as we go down to the list the maximum number of outbreaks are with the gi endoscopes as well as bronchoscopes which is around 150 outbreaks per year so that is a very huge number so in the bronchoscopy suit there are three ways of infection transmission one is the contaminated equipment itself may infect the healthy patients the other thing is patient coughing can transmit the infection through the air and can infect the technicians the doctors the bronchoscopist the nursing staff everyone and then equipment itself may spread the organism from one site which is infected to any other healthy site within a single patient itself so basically while thinking of about uh, infection prevention in the bronchoscopy suit we have to protect both uh, both the patients as well as the staff along with the protection of instruments so just the basic the parts of the bronchoscope so this is the finger activated suction wall then we have a suction wall here this is the lever which control the movement the to and fro movement of the bronchoscope distal end the body the working channel port and the insertion tube and this is the light source connector so coming to the list of uh, risk factors or the sources of contamination it is a huge list starting from ineffective bronchoscope cleaning which can be inadequate cleaning or we have a damaged internal channel or a poorly mated internal components then if we are using reusing the suction valve again and again then suction channel itself if it is not clean the biopsy port coming to the accessories the sample collection tubing part the trap in which we collect the secretions the reuse of stop box for bowel aspiration then coming to the washing equipments so automated washer itself can be a source of contamination the rinsing tank the tubing the filter the biofilm and the reprocessor cleaning brushes then while giving the topical anesthesia so they can also be a source of infection then improper connector to the reprocessor then recontamination even after dis, uh, disinfection then while storing the bronchoscope in the coiled position or in the bronchoscope cases from there also it can get infected so what do we do to prevent them so when we are talking about infection pr uh, prevention it starts while we lay down the foundation of bronchoscopy suit itself so the room should be a negative pressure room there should be control flow site ideal exchanges per hour is around 15 but at least minimum of 6 should be there then the exhaust flow rate should have a 50 cubic feet per minute and the differential pressure of around 2.5 pascal natural ventilation with a flow of at least 160 liter per second per patient should be there 
the door has to be closed uh, keep kept closed all the time in certain situation where recirculation to general ventilation cannot uh, be avoided then we can use hepa filters which are available uh, very easily and these must be installed in the exhaust duct and the filters then should be changed serviced replaced according to the recommendation of the manufacturer then there should be limited staffing only the persons who are really needed in the bronchoscopy room should be there during the procedure while coming to the protection of staff so basic things like hand hygiene the n95 mask scrubs ppe kit respirator all these should be used so this was a study which was done in uh, aims delhi only this was a indian bronchoscopy survey done in 2018 which showed uh, the percentage of people who are using uh, various uh, protection equipments during the normal bronchoscopy procedure and during a high risk bronchoscopy procedure so during a normal procedure uh, very less percentages are using shoe cover eye protection and particulate filter mask although the percentage increases when the uh, technician bronchoscopist and the nursing staff already know that it is a high risk procedure so there are two type of bronchoscopes which are available with us there is a single use disposable bronchoscope which are to be used only when patient do not require reprocessing and reusable bronchoscopes these can be used on multiple patient the devices need to undergo reprocessing in between uses and we have to clean the devices of soil and contaminants to inactivate microorganism by sterilization or disinfection the single use disposable bronchoscope they may be used if available in which case no cleaning and disinfection of the scope is required so these are basically the ideal thing which should be done the single use bronchoscope use but because of uh, financial issues and everything majority of the centers are using reusable bronchoscopes and even if these are to be used these are uh, while disposing them we have to submerge them in the 1% sodium hypochlorite solution for around 30 minutes and then only we can uh, pack them in a double bags and send them to the biomedical waste so these are the disposable bronchoscope these are disposable accessories need to be submerged in 1% sodium hypochlorite packed in double bed and then sent for biomedical waste disposal now coming over to one classification very important classification spalding classification which classified the instruments that we are using uh, daily as non critical equipment semi critical equipment and critical equipment so basically non critical equipment includes uh, the things which get contact with the intact skin for example stethos so it just require cleaning and a low level of disinfection then semi critical equipments it includes uh, intact with uh, with the contact with an intact mucous membrane so our bronchoscope come in this category this requires cleaning as well as a high level of disinfection and then we have critical equipments which can penetrate into sterile spaces like blood and all so this includes vascular catheters various surgical instruments and these require sterilization cleaning and sterilization so what is the difference between sterilization and disinfection so sterilization is the complete elimination of all form of microbial life including all the fungal spores and bacteria so this is usually done by autoclaving whereas disinfection it is further divided as high level intermediate level and low level so high level includes uh, that we are using is glutaraldehyde and orthoctahaldehyde intermediate includes ethyl alcohol and low level includes various ammonium compounds so while reprocessing the bronchoscope the first step is manual cleaning followed by sterilization washing and then leak test so predefined areas are there for each and every step so there is a procedure room which includes pre cleaning there is a scope cleaning room which includes leak test manual cleaning visible inspection and high level disinfection then there is a specified drying area for the bronchoscope and then there is a storage area so basically while cleaning it 
first you have to clean it with a clean water then you have to keep it in the side x although nowadays uh, majority of the centers are using opa and side x which is also 2% glitter glitter aldehyde is not being used and then again you have to again clean it with the clean water so first cleaning it with the wet gauze completely then there is a, a brush which is uh, available with this uh, bronchoscope so you have to clean this bronchoscope working channel with this brush then you have to flush it with 20 ml of clean water maybe you can do it two times and again you have to flush it with air then you can keep it in side x for 20 minutes but since this procedure is very much aerosol uh, generating procedure so nowadays we came up with these automatic uh, reprocessors or also called as endo washers so there is a detergent port and then there is a, a side x or opa whatever we are using and this will take around 5 minutes only for uh, the disinfection whereas this process take around 20 minutes so this is time saving less aerosol generating procedure and is nowadays in use in most of the centers again you have to uh, after removing it from disinfectant again we have to wipe it with the gauze piece and again we flush the channel with the 20 ml of clean water keep it in a sterile area now coming to the leak test so basically this is a manometer which is available in all the bronchoscopy room so ideally it should be done after every procedure just to see whether the bronchoscope is working okay or not so if you can see this crescent line this is around 140 to 200 mmhg of pressure so we just inflate it to 140 to 200 mmhg of pressure and then we check this needle whether it is staying there steadily or it is rapidly falling down if it is rapidly falling down it is a leak test positive and your bronchoscope has some defect otherwise if it is staying there your bronchoscope is good to go for the next bronchoscopy procedure so what are the disinfectant uh, we have glutaraldehyde we have periacetic acid and we have orthoaldehyde glutaraldehyde needs manual disinfection H2O2 can also be used, but then again, it causes oxidant damage to bronchoscope, so it is not widely used. And the other antiseptics like alcohols and iodides, they are not good for uh, disinfecting this bronchoscope. Now, uh, whatever AER or automated endoscope reprocessor or endo washer that you are using, make sure that it is compatible with the bronchoscope that you are using. so this is to be told by the manufacturer only so appropriate connector should be there to provide a luminal flow of disinfectant then uh, routinely test disinfectant concentration should be checked uh, so there are opa strips and color coding is present in those so we can check once in a while in 7 days uh, about the validity of that disinfectant whether it is okay or not then the other heat stable parts and accessories like biopsy forceps they require mechanical cleaning by ultrasonics and then followed by autoclaving or again sterilization regular maintenance and disinfection of these endo washers and supplies should be there every bronchoscopy room uh, should maintain a log book of a uh, bronchoscope use the number of times it's used the procedure was which was done and then again about the aer maintenance and disinfection when what when was its last uh, servicing done when was the disinfectant last checked with the help of opa strips or when it was changed then the white accessible cleaning and disinfection protocol manuals they should be there in the bronchoscope room and the manufacturer will provide of aer they will give their manuals this is the must the regular staff training session which usually not done or lacking in most of the center with specific pro provision of device specific instruction by introducing any new bronchoscope model or reprocessing equipment if it is installed in your institute make sure the bronchoscopy technician the bronchoscopists they all should be given a demo or a staff training session for that equipment 
then microbiological laboratories they should also regularly check for the outbreaks or pseudo outbreaks pseudo outbreaks is um, every time you are getting some organism in the uh, sample of a patient who is much more healthy and usually it is seen as either mycobacterium tuberculosis or pseudomonas these are the two most common which we are getting or contamination that we are getting of these two organism in most of the bronchoscopy procedure so if any contamination is suspected culture should include bronchoscope uh, culture should be sent to the lab from bronchoscope itself from the tap water and even from the reprocessing equipment then if it came out to be positive then we have to notify the institutional infection control officer the bronchoscope manufacturer the cdc the fda the state health department all those should be informed whenever any infection or pseudo infections are suspected the bronchoscopy lab it has to be autoclaved at that time and once the samples they are sterile then we can restart the procedure so this was a study in lung india a survey of fob practices in india so it was it included a sample size of around 670 bronchoscopists and it says that 92% they are doing routine cleaning of the bronchoscope with a solution or a detergent this solution is a multi enzyme solution that is basically used in endo washer it includes various lipases carbohydrases and four types of enzyme proteases which are basically used to lyse any organic material or blood or just to lyse that material it is being used in the endo washer then 93% of uh, bronchoscopists they were uh, using that uh, brush for cleaning the working channel but the complete bronchoscope immersion into the disinfectant solution was not done by 25% of population then 92% they were using cydex as disinfectant although nowadays the study was of 2017 but nowadays uh, majority are using opa 85% they were immersing in the cydex for 20 minutes or longer but 11% were unaware about the leak testing which is ideal to be done after each and every procedure then around 34 point 34.3 i just need one minute. so uh sorry 34% uh, of bronchoscopists they were doing the alcohol rinse of the bronchoscope as the final uh, step but around 60% were not doing this step so now we have certain mcqs for the audience so you can answer in the chat box so which of the following is a crucial step to prevent infection in the bronchoscopy room is it regularly changing bronchoscope accessories these are very easy one any one of you can answer i think using a bronchoscope without proper cleaning allowing unauthorized personnel in the room or disinfecting the bronchoscope only once a week somebody answered a so okay a is the right answer so we have to regularly change all the bronchoscope accessory not uh, each and every part and we have to regularly clean it uh staffing as i told it has to be limited in the bronchoscopy room while doing the procedure 
and bronchoscope should be disinfected after each and every procedure, not once in a week. So coming to the next. What is the recommended method for high level of disinfection of bronchoscopes to prevent infection? Soaking in sterile water, wiping with a damp cloth, using ETO gas, or we immerse it in a high level disinfectant solution. Please answer. This is an easy one. Okay, so Hemendra Pramar replied as B, which is the right answer, immersing in a high level disinfectant solution. Coming to the next question, which of the following disinfectant can be used for sterilizing bronchoscope? Is it Cydex? Is it OPA? Is it 2% glutaraldehyde or all of the above? Somebody answered A. It's not A, basically. Cydex is the other name of 2% glutaraldehyde and OPA is orthoxaldehyde, which we are using. Third is paracetic acid. So basically, the answer for this is uh, all of the above. I think last second question. So which of the following is a key measure to minimize the risk of infection transmission during bronchoscopy? Using a bronchoscope on multiple patients without seeing it. Properly cleaning and disinfecting bronchoscope accessories. Storing bronchoscope in a dirty, humid environment. Skipping hand hygiene before and after the procedure. This is an again an easy one. So yeah. This is properly cleaning and disinfecting bronchoscope accessory. So infection prevention in a bronchoscopy room includes maintaining a clean environment. And which of the following statement is true regarding this? Cleaning to be performed sporadically. Cleaning not necessary in bronchoscopy room. High touch surfaces should not be a focus of cleaning. Cleaning with appropriate disinfectant should be a routine. Somebody answered B, but I think that is for the last question, not for this question. Yeah, so the answer is cleaning with the appropriate disinfectant. This should be in routine. So I think that's all from my side. The take home message is journey is long and risky. And the uh, prevention of infection starts from the idea of laying the foundation of bronchoscopy suit itself. It's not the duty of a single person to prevent the infection in a bronchoscopy room. It requires contribution from bronchoscopist, technician, nursing staff, and everyone who is present in the bronchoscopy field during the procedure. <clears throat> Standardized training curriculum for uniform training to the pulmonologist and training physician. It should be done. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Priya. Um, very nice uh, and informative uh, uh, topic. And, uh, see, the prevention is better than cure. We uh, read uh, very early at time. And uh, um, good uh, interaction. And I think uh, you cover all the uh, aspect of the cleaning and the bronchoscopic uh, with um, procedure and all the essentials included. Uh, I, one thing more, and Arpiria, uh, though, um, uh, what is the appropriate, uh, like some patient with MD or tuberculosis, you are um, uh, conducting the bronchoscope. In uh, that case, uh, what is the recommended for the sterilization of the bronchoscope? Suspected case of MD or tuberculosis. Uh, first of all, we'll try to uh, 
that mdr case in the last on the list of that day okay. and after doing that procedure we'll try to the okay. procedure steps of the procedure remain same there in there is nothing extra that has to be done but we'll try to keep it in more for the disinfectant solution for around 20 to 30 minutes rather than for around 15 minutes what sol we have to do okay. but while doing the procedures it is very necessary that the bronchoscopist and the around technicians who are standing there they should wear a ppe kit is available okay. otherwise okay. at least they should have face mask scrubs uh, and exposure for the infection yeah. yes okay good good uh, good thank you uh, thank you dr priya and uh, thanks to all the audience uh, for your participation uh, thanks to all thank you thank you sir